So there's a lot that we could talk about in this Torah portion, but I kind of wanted to focus on a particular passage in Deuteronomy 17 in regards to the king and his responsibilities. This is what it says in Deuteronomy 17, beginning in verse 18. It says, And when he, the king, sits on the throne of his kingdom, he shall write for himself in a book a copy of this law approved by the Levitical priests. And it shall be with him, and he shall read in it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by keeping all the words of this law and these statutes and doing them, that his heart may not be lifted up above his brothers." And that he may not turn aside from the commandment, either to the right hand or to the left, so that he may continue long in his kingdom, he and his children in Israel. All right, I I love that passage, uh, because although it's speaking specifically to kings here, I think there's something here for all of us. It says that the king is to keep the words of the Torah. Why? Why? Well, uh, it's so that he can learn to fear the Lord, so that he wouldn't turn from the law, so that he would rule righteously and judge righteously. But there's another reason given, and that reason is so that his heart may not be lifted up above his brothers. So in other words, even though he is king, even though he's been elevated to this position of authority, and he rules over Israel— In God's eyes, he is not any better or more special than anyone else. And he's to remember that. In fact, his reading the Torah and his keeping of the Torah is designed to remind him of that, that he is no better than his brothers. He's not to see himself as higher or better than his brothers. So what does that teach us? I think that there's a general principle there that can apply to all of us here. I believe that keeping the Torah is designed to humble you. Keeping the Torah is designed to humble you. So regardless of our position or our status in life, regardless of who we are and what we think we know, we are not to think of ourselves as better than our fellow Israelite, if you will, our our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Now, I, I bring that up because... I think that there's some irony here, uh, especially for us as uh, Messianic believers, those of us who do love the Torah and we, we follow the Torah and, and we love it. We, we uh, have a revelation of certain commandments of the Torah that has sort of been lost in the church, like the Sabbath and the feast days and the dietary instruction. And, and all of those are, are wonderful things. Um, but unfortunately... For a lot of us, when we begin to have this revelation and we begin to look at these things and study these things, the opposite of what's supposed to happen happens. Um, For a lot of us, we become prideful and self-righteous in our keeping of the Torah, and we begin to look down on other believers who have not yet had the same revelation that we have and thereby we break the very heart of the Torah. We break the very intent of the Torah, what it's supposed to do in our hearts. Because the Torah is designed to humble us, right? That's what it says. Read the Torah every day, study it, so that your heart may not be lifted up above your brothers. So it's just like what, what Pastor Matthew was talking about last week, that it's possible to keep, a Torah, keep the Torah in such a way that you're actually breaking the Torah, if you're keeping it out of pride and self-righteousness and building your own kingdom rather than exalting God. So that brings me to my next point. How do we keep the Torah in humility? And the second point that I want to bring out of this is that it says the king is to write for himself a copy of the Torah. Now, I started thinking about this, and and I wanted to submit something to you guys, because we, as as Messianic believers, uh, we believe, we agree that Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that he is king, right? At least we should all agree with that, that Yeshua is king. And as Messianic believers, we understand that Yeshua obeyed the Torah. We love to tell people about that and to emphasize the fact that he was a Torah-observant Jew. 
So if Yeshua is the king of Israel and he kept the Torah, and according to the Torah, the king of Israel is to write his own copy of the Torah, well, when did Yeshua write his copy of the Torah? Where did he write it? Will archaeologists someday dig up the, the book that Yeshua wrote his copy of the Torah in? That'd be a pretty neat discovery. Well, I want to submit to you guys that King Yeshua is writing his copy of the Torah right now. And he's writing it on your hearts through the work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jeremiah thirty-one thirty-three. it talks about the new covenant and that the Lord will write his Torah on the hearts of his people. And as believers, those of us who have read the New Testament, we understand that Yeshua's death and his resurrection has inaugurated this new covenant, that it's breaking forth into our reality so that the Torah will be written on our hearts. Why? Well, as it says in Deuteronomy, so that we will learn to fear the Lord and that we will keep all his law and that we will walk out his commandments, but that's not the end, and so that our heart will not be lifted above our brother, that we will keep the commandments out of humility, not out of self-righteousness, not out of thinking that we're better than anyone, because what is the basis of the new covenant? It's that we've sinned, it's that we're not any better than anyone else. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but we've been forgiven, and we have a, a new heart, a new life, that the Lord has given us so that we can learn to walk after him and follow him in humility, keeping his commandments. That's all I have in in conclusion. Sorry. (laughs) Shabbat shalom.